Today we are looking at proportions, solving proportions, 5-4, chapter 5, lesson 4. Um, two vocab words, or one vocab word actually is cross product, which means multiplying the numerator of one fraction with the denominator of a second fraction, and then vice versa, the numerator of the second fraction by the denominator of the first fraction. Uh, number two, um, just a helpful hint like you would share on your Padlet, um, potentially, as you're doing this for your homework, um, the cross product of proportionate ratios are equal. And my example would be number three, if you take the numerator of fraction one and multiply it by the denominator of fraction two, you get four. And if you take the numerator of fraction two and multiply it by the denominator of fraction one, you get four. We know that two fourths is equal to one half um, just by either reducing or if we do the cross products of equal proportions and we get um, the same answer and four and four would be the same answer. Um, a similar, our problems that you would encounter on your assignment, quizzes and tests would be a question like 4A and 4B, are the ratios proportionate? Um, the answers would be yes or no and then you need to explain why and an explanation of why would be um, what I'm going to show you here in a second. Um, I'm going to do cross products, 2 times 8 is going to give me 16, 3 times 7 is going to give me 21 and you know that 21 and 16 are not equal therefore we do not have um, these two ratios being proportionate, and this would answer your why. If you just did this work right here and show me the cross products, you have proven to me that two thirds um, is not equal to the ratio of seven eight. B would be a similar situation. You have four tenths is equal to forty hundredths by reducing. You know that both reduce down to one fourth. But if you're going to prove using cross products, um, you could multiply four and a hundred and get four hundred and you would multiply 10 and 40 and get 400 because the cross products are equal. We know that we have equal ratios. Uh, number five is where the algebra comes back in. It's been a while since we've done algebra and this chapter does focus a little bit more on solving for a variable. Um, the example would be y over 21 equals one third and there is a process for this. Um, and you're gonna start with cross products. I didn't leave myself enough room underneath letter A. So I will do it off to the side, and I'm going to set my problem up by using cross products to begin with. I'm going to multiply y and 3, and I'm going to get 3y. I'm going to multiply 21 and 1, and I'm going to get 21. 3y is equal to 21 um, if we can solve for y and prove what y equals. In this case, then, you do what you would always do. Get the variable by itself by dividing by 3, and we have y equals 7. Please notice how vertical I am working. Um, as I am working vertical. And then to check your work, you could check your work by plugging back in here, but it would probably be even more intelligent to check your work by plugging into your original problem. And you've got 7 over 21 and 1 third. 7 over 21 reduces to 1 third. 1 third is already reduced. Or you could again do cross products and 7 times 3 is 21. 1 times 21 is 21. Um, therefore we know that works. Again, the variable could be anywhere. So make sure you're prepared to solve the variable forever it is. My preference is to always put the variable on the left side of the equal signs because that's what I'm used to working with, but it really doesn't matter where you put the variable. So in letter B, I'm going to just take 9n as my first cross product and set it equal to 6 times 24, which would give me 120, 144, I believe that would be. Again, solve for your variable. Divide by 9, n equals, looks like 15. Box your answer, smart people check, smart people probably check in the original problem, and 6 nines and 15 24 both reduce down to 2 thirds, or you could use cross products to check your work to make sure you have it correct. Yes? The answer is 16. 16? 16, 16, okay, 16, sorry. Good job, Mr. Walker. So the answer is 16, and then 16 24 and 6 nines. Thanks, guys. And number six would be the example of a word problem you're going to do, and you are going to see some word problems in which you're dealing with um, mass and length on a fulcrum. A teeter-totter would be an example of a fulcrum. A seesaw, I think, is another word that you might have for that on the playground, if you have those on your playground. Uh, mass one over length two equals mass two over length one. Um, and what it's telling us here is that unequal masses will only balance on a fulcrum if they are not equal distances apart. So if you have two different masses, if you have two people sitting on a teeter-totter and they weigh different things, are different, they have different weights, and they sit in equal distance from the middle, obviously the heavier person is going to sink and the lighter person is going to go in the air. However, if you adjust the lengths, you can actually balance the teeter-totter 
um, with unequal masses. So we're going to use Gloria and Mr. Walker as an example here. Um, Gloria and Mr. Walker like to teeter-totter together. Mr. Walker and Gloria both confirm that, right? Sure. I'm lucky to have you guys in here today. Um, so they teeter-totter outside. Um, do we have one on our playground? Oh, yeah. Kind of. Kind of, okay. Uh, Mr. Walker weighs, um, his weight, actually half of his weight would be 90 pounds. He does not weigh 90 pounds, but half of his weight is 90 pounds, so we're just going to go with it. Um, and he sits five feet away from the center of the teeter-totter. Gloria balances the teeter-totter um, by sitting six feet away. With this information, um, we can figure out how much Gloria weighs by using the formula above mass 1 over length 2 equals mass 2 over length 1. Now, very important that we understand what mass and what length go together. So I'm going to simply assign Mr. Walker. Mr. Walker is going to equal mass 1 and length 1. Uh, I don't need that there. And Gloria is going to equal mass 2 and length 2. I would suggest possibly writing yourself a little note here to keep them separated or to keep them straight. Go back up to your formula and let's start with Mr. Walker. If he is mass 1 and length 1, we know everything we need to know about Mr. Walker. Okay, we know, I'm going to rewrite the formula here, mass 1 over length 2 equals mass 2 over length 1. So if we know Mr. Walker is mass 1, um, we can fill in the information for him by starting with 90 for mass 1. We're not going to deal with length 2 yet because we're not quite sure if we know it or not. We're not going to deal with mass 2 yet because we don't really quite know what we're talking about yet or we don't, haven't got that far in the problem. And then we know Mr. Walker is 5 feet away from the center. So let's put 5 down here. The one thing we do know about Gloria is that her length from the center would be 6 feet. And we are trying to figure out what her mass is, which would be our variable. You have a proportion set up with a variable, so you're going to solve it as um, you did earlier on, or you saw me do earlier on in the notes. Um, cross product would be 6x, 90 times 5 is 450. Solve for x, divide by 6, and x equals, I believe, is 75 pounds. Box your answer. Go ahead and check your work. I would again plug it back into the original problem, which would be over here, I guess. Check your cross products, and you should get 450 for both cross products, which means it works. Remember labels, super duper important. Solving proportions 5 1. Since you're sitting here, any questions?